Meet a local businessman who spent time behind enemy lines. Coming up next on Carolina People. Good morning. Welcome to Carolina People. This morning we're at the Fox 43 studio. We're focused on the 46th anniversary of Carolina Trust Federal Credit Union, which, was, which happened on Wednesday, and we're visiting with the Chair Emeritus, Major General Jones E. Bolt. Good morning, General Good morning, Bolt. Good morning, Greg. Nice to see you. Thank you so much for coming in. Glad to do it. This is so exciting to get you in, and of course, to hear about so much of the involvement of the expansion of Carolina Trust Federal Credit Union and its former, the, the name that it was formerly held before, uh, before the Air Force Base yes. um, shut down in 1993. Mm -hmm. Very exciting on Wednesday. I'm sure those activities must have been spectacular. Oh, great. It's great, yes. Absolutely. Yeah, I'm very proud of that organization. And I'm very honored and, and pleased to have had a part in it. Mm -hmm. You were with the uh, you were with the Federal Credit Union for almost 25 years. Yeah, I was I was chairman of the board for 25 years. I was actually on the board a couple of years before that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. How about yourself? How long have you been in the Myrtle Beach area? Oh, we came back here. I retired at the end of 1973 after 31 years in the Air Force, and this really is a uh, it's close to where both of my wife and I were raised. Uh, we were both raised up around Greenville. Mm -hmm. We used to come down here as children. But there wasn't much of a murder beach. I don't think we even had a stoplight <laughs> back in those days. So you can see how it's grown. But uh, anyway, uh, we uh, we decided uh, we would come back here, and and I had a little property uh, down at Surfside, and so mm -hmm. did my mother. Mm -hmm. And we uh, we liked the area. Uh, I don't. I'm not really a, overly fond of the beach itself, but I do like the area, mm -hmm. and I like the weather, and I like the golf courses. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yes. You're a big golfer. Well, I, I still play about twice a week, but I used to play pretty well. But uh, I, I just uh, thought it would be a good place to go. We didn't make up our mind for about a year. I bought a little house that we lived in down at Surfside, and we uh, we enjoyed it. And we so I decided to uh, look for a place. I had some property in Surfside, which I sold and bought an uh, acre of land out in the country, out in the Sockesty area. Uh, on a freshwater canal off of, of, of Sockestee Creek in the waterway. So I'd always wanted to, to do that. And uh, so that was a lifelong dream come true. And living there, I can't imagine getting out on the golf course, leaving that uh, fre freshwater stream there. That must be incredible. Well, it's, uh, it, it, no, it's not hard for me to do. <laughs> I look forward to my twice a week play. Right. 31 years in the Air Force. Yes. 31 years. And I think I saw it was 19 in the early 40s that uh, you, you'd entered? Yes, I, I finished uh, Clemson in 1942, my father in 1918, my youngest son in 1974, granddaughter in uh, 2001, so it's a family tradition. Golly, and I, as reflected by your jacket, that's <laughs> yeah. a pretty strong color there, yeah. General Boyd. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I'm proud of that school. I love it. And uh, I try not to miss a football game um. or anything else that I can get to. But uh, I finished in 1942 and went straight in the Army Air Corps. Mm -hmm. and, and graduated in, from flying school in, uh, in uh, uh, March 1943. Mm -hmm. Instructed for a while in advanced flying school a few months, then went overseas and flew P-47s in combat in Europe. Mm -hmm. and, uh, but my combat didn't last too very long because I, I uh, had engine failure right after Normandy invasion and had to bail out over France and was captured immediately. Is that you were captured yeah. over France? Yeah. I was captured though. At, uh, close to a little town of Mance, uh, about, oh, 40 miles or so to the southwest of Paris. I built out real low altitude. In fact, I, d I didn't know if I was going to get out or not. But the chute opened, I hit the ground at about the same time. And, mm. But the engine just froze up, and that P-47 flies like a brick when the prop stops. <laughs> what happened? Did you ever find out what happened to the engine? Yes, uh, rather interesting, in a way. After the war, and I got always, this hadn't been too many years ago, I was awakened one night by a phone call from a friend of mine that I hadn't seen or heard tell of since we got out of aeronautical engineering school in, uh, back in 1946, after the war. And uh, a guy by the name of K.C. Guy, who was leading the flight that I was on that day. Mm -hmm. And he asked me, did, uh, 
at 2 o'clock in the morning, which I wasn't too pleased to be awake. <laughs> and he asked, asked, is this Jonesy Volt? And I said, yes, it is. He said, well, you sound like you're 100 years old. I said, well, oh, no. what do you expect me to sound like at 2 o'clock in the morning? He was calling from uh, uh, Washington State from Seattle. So he, I think he might have been about half smashed, and he wasn't paying much attention to the time. Right. But anyway, he uh, told me that what happened was that they lost two more airplanes the next day. For the same reason, engine froze up, no oil pressure. So they knew something was wrong. So they started investigating it and found that uh, the squadron that I was in had run out of engine oil uh, a couple of days before. So these uh, two couple of lads went over to a, a British Spitfire outfit, which was all across the rail railroad uh, track from us at a place called Ashford in southern England, and barred some oil not recognizing or not knowing that the British use uh, detergent oil in their engines. We don't. You can't mix the two. If you do mix the two, it foams, and it all goes out the exhaust. And that's what happened to those, to me and to those three airplanes. I'm still looking for that crew chief, by the way. <laughs> I'm sure you are. That's right. <laughs> and maybe for quite a while. Yeah. But uh, anyway, it... Uh, it was not a very pleasant ordeal. When we first got in there, through the interrogation and all this, I tried to escape out of a civilian jail in Paris, but got caught. They kind of kicked me around a little bit. But anyway, it's, uh, it was uh, the first uh, few months there was not, uh, not too bad. We got, uh, after we finally got out of interrogation, that was a lot of threats. And that they take everything away from you, like your shoes, your belt, and so you can't hang yourself and mm -hmm. this sort of thing. And you can't very well escape if you don't have shoes on. Mm -hmm. It's pretty tough. Mm -hmm. And so uh, these kind of things were, but I wasn't really beaten very much. I, after, the, uh, uh, after I tried to escape out of the jail, they did the, the, the civilian jail in Paris. They did uh, put me in an uh, underground, down below the basement cell, mm -hmm. darkened with a Frenchman. He didn't speak English, and I didn't speak French, so we didn't get along too well. We didn't converse very much. <laughs> Come by about once every hour and turn a light on and see that we were still kicking. Mm -hmm. And uh, no food or water. I don't uh, except a bowl of soup a day. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I don't know how long I was in there. I lost complete track of time because they'd taken away my watch and all yeah. this sort of thing. But I, I just estimated that I was in there something like about three, four, five days maybe. But after that, uh, into a... Uh, air interrogation, and then finally it started like little three over in uh, eastern Germany on the Polish border. You were in your early 20s, General Bowl. I was 20, 22 years old. Oh my God, just to think that, I mean, so much is racing in your head, I mean, I, I can't even fathom what that would be like. <laughs> well, it's, uh, it's kind of tough, but you do what you got to do. You got to have a lot of faith, you got to have some beliefs that you can make it, and, and, uh, and uh, most do. Some don't and it's unfortunate but mm -hmm. uh, I never uh, we, after the we were moved in January of 1945 when the Russians started their drive across for Poland mm -hmm. the Russian uh, army got within about uh, five or six miles of us mm -hmm. it was dead of winter in fact it was the coldest winter in Germany as I said in 45 years mm -hmm. and uh, they Germans moved us out of there one night about 10 o'clock. It was 30 minutes to go. I was still wearing the same shoes, the same pants, the same shirt I had on when I bailed out. Mm -hmm. I did have an overcoat, by the way. But uh, we walked four days and four nights in the blizzard. And we stopped about every two hours. But uh, we soon found that we, it, when we stopped, if we would lie down in the snow, we couldn't get up. We, it was so stiff right. and freezing. Our, our, our feet froze, frostbitten. And that went on for four days and four nights, and we finally stopped in a place called Muskow in, in an old tile factory, and we did get warmed up. And, and this was all in, in the late January, mm -hmm. 1945. And after that, we put, on, uh, put in uh, 48 boxcars, freshly used to buy cattle. Mm -hmm. And it's supposed to hold, well, the 40 and 8 stands for, uh, for, for uh, eight head of cattle of 40 men. Mm -hmm. It was 63 of us in mind. 63. 63. Mm -hmm. We uh, could all sit at the same time only by kind of toboggan fashion, you know, and that way. But uh, we were in there locked up for four days and four nights. How many of the 63 were Americans? Well, all Americans. All Americans. All Americans. 
we were all American officers. Mm -hmm. All either we, we, we the pilots, uh, bombardiers, navigators, everybody. You all were allowed to talk and convert. I oh mean, yeah, yeah. We had no no guards in with us. We were in there locked in by ourselves. No way to get out. And the, and the, the bad thing about it too was the train wasn't marked in any way with red crosses. It uh, so uh, we didn't know if we were going to get strafed by our own people mm -hmm. or, or what. But we finally wound up at Starleg Luft 7A down in a place called Mooseburg, uh, not too far from Munich. Mm -hmm. and it, it, it went from bad to worse. That place was uh, built for uh, 14,000 prisoners. And when we were finally liberated by General Patton's 14th Armored Division, there was 130,000 of us in there of all nationalities. 130,000 where a facility was built for 14,000? Yes. I slept on the ground the last uh, three months of the war. We were very uncomfortable. That is incredible. Yeah. But, uh, the happiest day of my life, I think, was when the tanks rolled in there. I guess it had to have been. Yeah. yeah. Uh, he, now, you know, 50 plus years later, as you think back, almost 60 years now, yeah. as you think back on that time, it, it, you talk about faith, obviously, and other things that helped get you through. Is it potentially other Americans around you going through the same thing? I'm sure quite a few of them probably didn't make it, for instance, going, yeah. through, the, going through the terrible weather and otherwise. Yeah, they, we lost quite a few on that march, and we lost a few after we arrived at uh, Salt Lake 7A, To This guy died of, uh, died of uh, hunger, starvation. Uh, we had a few to go completely off their, out of their mind. I saw one kid shot trying to climb a fence and the guards was right there mm. they get out and so those things hurt another uh, lad I saw shot he was standing in a doorway of a of a cookhouse doing an air raid he was he wasn't outside and we, we were all not allowed outside doing an air raid uh, warning but he was standing in the doorway and a guard from outside shot and killed him mm. those things hurt to view that yeah I'm sure you have to see it Mm -hmm. <laughs> when, when you think back, let me just ask real quick, as it related to the t interrogation, when they would interrogate you, were there other Americans around or they did it entirely one-on-one -on -one, or multiple people on one? No, it was one-on-one. -on -one. Right. I was interrogated by a, a German captain, Luftwaffe Air Force, and uh, we were supposed to give my name, rank, seal, number, and that's it. Mm -hmm. And that's all he got out of me. Uh, some were not as fortunate. I was threatened, but I was not physically harmed. Mm -hmm. and. Uh, as soon as I walked in and gave him my name, rank, and serial, serial number, he looked up at me and, in perfect English and said, Ah, oh, another one from the South. Is that right? <laughs> so it startled me, to say the least. He said he spent a lot of time in Florida before the war. Is that yeah. right? Spoke perfect English. Better than I did. That's incredible. He knew all about me. He, uh, after about th what, three or four days of it, uh, he said, Ah, we're going to let you go. said, We know about you anyway. He told me when I finished Clemson, where I lived, he told me... Uh, what squadron I was in. He named off my squadron commander, my group commander. He, uh, he uh, uh, called off the type of airplane I was in. He knew exactly. And he knew where I lived and all of that. How would he have known all that? We did get out of paper, newspapers. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Germans are very good at that. So are the British. So are we. Not lately. We haven't been quite as good, but... Our intelligence, but th those things are available if people want to want to take the time to do it. The Germans were very thorough in their intelligence gathering. That is so. fascinating. <laughs> Golly, well, of course, you know the folks on the 46th anniversary of the Federal Credit Union, but at the same time, that's an incredible story. Yeah, that is incredible. Now, do you, do you are there groups of former prisoners of war that get together on a regular basis to yes, uh, yes, uh, South Compound that I was in. There's five compounds at Sulig, uh, uh uh, three and by each compound held about ten thousand uh, POWs. The North Compound was most all British Commonwealth people. The South Compound and all the other compounds, in fact, four of them. Uh, the South of one I was in was about ten thousand. Uh, I mean, about to two thousand people in there. Mm -hmm. Ten thousand total in in Starlight Three, and uh, we have a reunion. Uh, probably the biggest one we've ever had is with our fiftieth reunion mm -hmm. we had in. Uh, <clears throat> in uh, Cincinnati, mm -hmm. and we having one next year. Not many of us left, though. Yeah, not many of us. So I, I was one of the youngest guys in there, and uh, there was a few uh, my age, or maybe younger, but uh, most of them have passed on. But some are still living. The one next year will be the 60th. Yeah. Mm-hmm.
Mm -hmm. That should be, uh, uh, and the stories, I guess, at some level, are more amazing every time they're. T I mean, you know, it's a, every every person has such uh, uh, divergent uh, views yeah. as the way they viewed uh, their own situation. Yeah, yeah, very true, mm -hmm. very true. Mm -hmm. Everything was different. You were allowed to tell your shot down story one time when you got into camp. No more. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Cut it off. We were, everybody had heard them all. Right. But uh, in, but it, very interesting though. Very interesting. Just a simple question for viewers, myself even, when, when we hear Major General, that means uh, Brigadier General will be a one star, right. and Major General will be two, three, two, two, two stars? Two stars. Okay. Two stars, yeah. I didn't like getting shot at very much, but, uh, <laughs> but then again, uh, that's your job, that's your duty. Mm -hmm. that's, that's, and uh, I, I like the challenge. You know, as I read through your bio, um, it looked like you were in a lot of different locations over a... Uh, over that 31 years, you were located and headed up and had an amazing career at a heck of a lot of different ins installations. Oh, yes, yes, yes. Uh, uh, <clears throat> I think the longest I was ever at one station was at Williams Air Force Base uh, back in the, in the uh, late 40s. Mm -hmm. uh, I was there uh, almost four years. Mm -hmm. But after I got to be a colonel, I <laughs> it wasn't around very long. Mm -hmm. I went from one, one uh, unit to another. I think I saw you spent almost four years, or maybe a little more than four years, at the Pentagon. Oh yeah, I had a little, I spent almost six. I had two different tours. Uh, first time I was a, uh, uh, went there was in 1954. After I got back up from Germany and went to command and staff school, <clears throat> and uh, was there four years that that time. And then I went back again when I came home from Vietnam. In uh, uh, when I come next, 68, mm -hmm. 1968. Mm -hmm. I spent two years over there. Mm. Commanded two different fighter wings in, in uh, Vietnam, uh, Cameron Bay and Da Nang. And then I wound up the war there as the uh, uh, director of the Tactical Air Control Center and Operations at, uh, at the headquarters. I think I saw while you were in <clears throat> Vietnam, you flew 167 combat missions. Yeah, 167. I got it. Yeah. That's incredible. You, you'd you been in the air more than 20 years, yeah. and to uh, to amass that many, I think I saw in total more than 10,000 flying hours. Yeah, I just kind of quit counting. Yeah, I'm sure you difference. did. That's right. How could you keep up? I mean, yeah. it's incredible. Yeah, yeah I, I, I was, I was uh, lucky, and I was fortunate to stay in the flying business. I flew right on up to the day I retired. Mm -hmm. And uh, as long as you keep taking the flight checks and you, mm -hmm. and you stay healthy, it's uh, no reason you shouldn't. There's a Clemson, uh, a dedicated Clemson fanatic in the PD area who flies up to a lot of Clemson games, uh, who, like yourself, sir, was a fighter pilot, Ed Young, oh, yes, talked about a little earlier, classmate. former congressman, mm -hmm. who still fly, flies on a regular basis, loves yeah. getting up in the air, and always <clears> talks <throat> about flying over the PD area and seeing the crops grow yeah. and seeing uh, time pass as the crops grow. Yeah. Well, I don't, I don't fly anymore. I, uh, a couple of us owned a Beechcraft Bonanza for several years, but... Uh, uh, after you pass 65, it uh, it's pretty tough to uh, get your 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 physical uh, okay. Mm -hmm. And uh, I had a little heart problem, nothing serious, but it doesn't bother me any. But uh, the uh, people said, oh, "Yeah, but you got heart disease." <laughs> mm -hmm. So uh, I take medication for it. I'm fine, mm -hmm. but uh, mm -hmm. but I could no longer pass the physical. Mm -hmm. FAA wouldn't approve. It. He exactly. said, "You can fly all you want to. Just be sure you got another pilot with you." Right. He said, no, thank you. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm sure that's tough. No, I can't do that. I, 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 can't, I hate to get in an airplane with somebody else mm. flying it. Well, you know, before we started, obviously, you talked about the word autopilot when we yeah. were referring to that 11-hour, 6,000-mile trek. Because I was asking you simply, how do folks use the bathroom when they're in the, in the air uh, for 11 hours? Well, you, we have, you have a relief tube, a relief bottle. Mm -hmm. It's and uh, so you you just you just go. That's you, all. You make do. You go. Uh, I go that led my trip from uh, from Hickam Air Force Base in Hawaii to Okinawa. Uh, we was in the in the airplane, led my hours, uh, uh, F one hundred five, two of us, mm -hmm. and uh, we refueled in the air three times. Uh, it was a long haul. It was mm -hmm. a long haul. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. but uh, you will, uh, flight surgeons on when you're going on a long one that way uh, uh, will. Uh, Normally give you a uh, a uh, little medication that will kind of dehydrate you a little bit mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. keep you from having to go tinkle. 
And I didn't go at all during that period. And then it, when you're on a real long one like that, and that, that uh, uh, mission was the longest overwater single engine every fuel flight that, and fighters that they had been. I and, uh, so uh, I, uh, I was pretty excited about it. And then you, you, you got another little pill you take before at the tail end of the, of the flight to kind of pep you up a little bit. Mm -hmm. Because after a while, you do get a little oh, tired. Yeah. At 11 you, yeah, hours? You're not moving at all. Yeah. <laughs> but that, you're busy. You're busy navigating. Is, yeah. yeah. An incredible commitment. Yeah. I mean, an incredible commitment being a fighter pilot or yeah. being in the air. Yeah. Well, since then, they've, they've flown a lot uh, but, uh, further than that. But nowadays, uh, the tankers and the, and the fighters go right along together, fly together. But in our case, we had to rendezvous because we didn't have a KC-135 uh, we we jet or 707 tankers. Uh, over there, we had to use KB-50s, and they had a. There, it was a piston-engine airplane, mm -hmm. and uh, we had to rendezvous with them, and that used to get kind of sporty. Mm -hmm. Those, uh, especially uh, when you're about halfway between uh, uh, Hawaii and uh, and uh, Wake, for example. Oh yeah, <laughs> you better find that tanker because you know you're going to swim. Uh, and you don't have enough fuel to get back. Golly, that must be incredible. Yeah. yeah. The most exciting aspect for you of being in the air. When you think of all the times, the 31 years in the Air Force, and of course there was the experience of uh, being with the Acrojets, the predecessor yeah. to the Thunderbirds. Yeah. That was something you got almost immediately after returning to the States. And uh... Yeah, we started a team uh, in uh, 1948, and the POP-80s, F-80s, our first success, really successful jet fighter. And uh, it was one of these kind of things that just kind of happened. Uh, we would train. We was at Williams. We were uh, training pilots uh, from one type of airplane into the uh, one fighter into the jet, the, the P-80, mm -hmm. and we had a graduation. Uh, and so uh, uh, when they graduated, uh, it's, it's, it's just four or five of us. We like fly formation, and so we just got together. And our boss uh, said, "Well, you can do a little flyby." So we just kind of started doing that. Mm. And then it just grew, and we were invited uh, to fly uh, for uh, President Truman mm. down at Eglin. And then one thing led to another. Then we were invited to come down there all of the, the, the big air shows that they had at Eglin Air Force Base in Florida. And then uh, after about a year, we were, uh, were, were nominated, not nominated, but made the Air Force demonstration team. Golly. Are there ever times where you're just scared to death? I mean, when you're doing shows like that, you, you've got to be pushing the edge as it relates to uh, to uh, aerodynamics and otherwise. Are there ever, or do you just not have enough time to be scared to death? You have enough time yeah. to be scared. <laughs> no, no, no. You, you, uh, well, a couple of times, uh, Mike Smollett, who flew left wing, I flew right wing. We bumped wings one time in Detroit, <laughs> coming out of the bottom. It didn't bang the airplanes up very much, but you could, you feel it. And smoking on the ground, on the ground with, as we finished the show, he said you hit me. I said no, you hit me. Right, right. Oh my. <laughs> but uh, no, you you you're just so busy, and 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 concentrating so hard on flying the airplane and staying in formation because your wings overlap about five or six feet, and and uh, so it's in and you're constantly maneuvering. Mm -hmm. You're never straight in the level, and so, and it's it's it's, it's again it's a real challenge. But uh, we, uh, we, I think we started a good thing, and I love to see the Thunderbirds fly. I go oh, every yeah. chance I, I get now. I know most of them. I've got pictures of most of them at home. That's right. I think they'll be in Myrtle this summer for some yeah, fun. They will, yeah. Which is very exciting. I'll be Time, right on the beach. I'm sure you will. We all will. Time has escaped us. I hate to say we only have a couple of minutes, and the focus, obviously, on this past Wednesday's 46th anniversary of the credit union. Before it became Carolina Trust Federal Credit Union, what was the, the name beforehand? The Air Force Base? It was the uh, it was Murray Beach Air Force Base Federal Credit Union. Mm -hmm. uh, in the earlier days of credit unions, you had to have a, a, a sponsor, mm -hmm. uh, a, a, a cohesive union, one unit mm -hmm. sponsor. Well, the, the unit was the Air Base. So we formed and got the charter for a federal credit union. I was not here at the time, obviously. but. Uh, then when the base closed, uh, we had a kind of a rough time convincing the National Credit Administration that we could uh, expand and stay open. Mm -hmm. and, and we did. 
And, well, it was a challenging time, and, but that's a good organization. And I'm just so pleased and proud of uh, the, all the hard work they do and, and how they serve the people. I, I think if you, if you don't join a credit union, and now you can because it's a community credit union, anybody that lives in Norrie County, works in Norrie County, uh, Southern Florence County, and a couple of others, mm -hmm. they can join it. And it, it, it's just a, a fine organization to join. They pay good dividends. They, uh, you can borrow money without uh, cutting off your arm and this sort of thing. So mm -hmm. it's, a, it's a great thing to take advantage of, and people ought to take advantage of it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And we have now up, uh, over 30,000 members and, and still growing. It's a great organization. It truly is. General Bolt, thanks so much for being with us this morning. This has been a rare treat. Thank you. It's nice hope, to be here. Hope to get you back. I hope so. Thank you. Stay tuned to more Carolina People with Major General Jones E. Bolt coming up next. Jim McDaniel had this to say of uh, Major General Jones E. Bolt. He's proven himself to be a giant of a leader, a most trusted advisor, and a man of unquestionable character. If you've been sitting here the last 30 minutes, you'd see just that. Fascinating, fascinating gentleman. Happy 46th anniversary to Carolina Trust Federal Credit Union.